you could make more money from affiliate marketing than, than AdSense. I'm like, what is that? Let me research that. And honestly, it's funny. Um, one of the sponsors of the show, shout out to Ringba. Yeah, I, Ringba. I, I, I linked up with um, Harrison's company back in the day. We just shot a fucking banger right now. I can't wait till you hear this shit. It's, it's like next level. No one's talking about this. Shout out to our sponsors because without them, this shit wouldn't be possible. Shout out to Ringba. Shout out to Adam Young, the paper call revolution. There's big, big money in paper call. Whether you're someone who's a novice looking to get into it, whether you're someone's already doing it, putting up big numbers, let's fucking do this, guys. Get the fucking book on Amazon. We're going to drop a link here. Take your shit to the next level. Let's fucking go. Yo, check it out. We're back, baby. We're in Medellin again. This is round two, and we're starting this shit off the way we sort of last time. We got some aguardiente here. This time, I got my man Michael Walker. He is the CEO and co-founder of Rubicon. This guy puts on some big fucking numbers. He's gonna be. This episode is gonna be a fucking banger. So take, bring out your fucking notepads, take some notes, because we're gonna get deeper here, man. Great to oh, have yeah. on the show. By the way. We're doing some aguardiente here. This is what you do when you're in Colombia. If you ain't been there, get fucking ready. So, hell let's yeah, go, appreciate baby. you. Let's, let's fucking go. go. Let's go, baby. <laughs> All right, man. So, let, let's start off. Listen, we know each other, man. We know each other for a couple of years, man. We met at Carlos Corona's event, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. or that or Bangkok. No, I think it was Carlos' event, and then I saw you in Bangkok. We were at oh, the Grand. God. It's kind of like with Ray. We were at the Grand Society thing, right? There was some Grand Secret Society. Yeah, thing we were at, right? and you had that table with the slide. Remember, like it was up the stairs, and you you go oh, down the slide to the bar. I, I yeah, I forgot about that, bro. <laughs> we, did you get your? Did you get a massage in the bathroom? No, I heard right, about that. Sounds it. fucked up. Let, <laughs> let me explain. It sounds like we're doing some bullshit. This is what happens. You're in Bangkok. You go take a. You go pee, and then these guys put a towel on your neck that worked there, and they start massaging you. It's part of like. I don't even know why they do that shit, honestly. But we weren't like trying to do illegal shit or what uh, bad shit. But that's what happened. But yeah. did you get one or no? No, I did it. I, I was like, mm. yeah, <laughs> I'm paying my man. I think I tried to get you to get one. I, I, I was like coercing people. He's like, like, go, you, to go, go to the bathroom. bathroom. Go to the bathroom. I'm like, bro, the bathroom's got a cool experience. You guys got to go. And half the motherfuckers went, half didn't go. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, all good. So we were in Bangkok. We had a great time there, man. And we would hang out. And I tell you one way that I really bonded with you. And this this might sound like silly, but you know, in our industry, you're you're word is your bond right it's all about trust so when i met you with carlos you were an eagles fan right you are an eagles fan i'm an eagles fan philadelphia eagles right and the eagles having a good season and we're like yo if the eagles make it to the nfc championship we're gonna go we had a few drinks in us right yeah we talked about it in bangkok we talked about it another time and bro they made it to the nfc championship yeah remember i feel like that would have been bad karma not to go so i was like you know what? no matter what we made this deal they actually made it which was crazy so yeah, I'm gonna go make it happen. I literally flew in that morning, went to the game with you, you know, had a couple drinks, and then flew out that night. Oh, that's dedication. Bro. <laughs> so I was like, just keeping my word. Well, bro, the fact is like, cause you know, we we said we're gonna do it, and we fucking did yeah, it, man. You exactly. know, and uh, that's promises made, promises kept, man. That's the kind of thing. So let's talk about that. How was that? How has that served you in this business, man? You know, honoring your word. Uh, yeah, honestly, I feel like in this business, it's I'm not say it's it's everything, right? Like once you don't honor your word, yeah, then it, it spreads and then it, it's just like, you know, like I feel like in, in my I guess I've always honored my word, people know that and they'll say, Hey, work with Michael. He's he's a good guy, he's gonna do what he says he does, he's not gonna burn you, stuff like that. And um in this industry there's so many successful people. The second you burn anyone, everyone talks and like you know, you're like that. Yeah, your 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 network and all of that is just shrunken significantly. Like, why would you ever want to mess that up? I feel like in this space, just from who you know, like you're gonna you're gonna meet people or millionaires of eight figures, nine figures, maybe a couple billionaires are going to be billionaires. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I don't want anyone ever saying, oh yeah, don't work with Michael, he's bad, <laughs> and I need something down the future, or, you know, business relationship. Yeah, but, yeah. And I feel like no one can say that. But everyone, everyone that speaks about you says the greatest things man and and it's also it's a testament and again that little example of that eagles game you know listen i was like 
who knows, he comes, he might not come, and, but I had a feeling you come, because, you know, Eagles fans, we've been through a lot of shit, right? right. So, so we came, we had a fucking great time, man, you know, it was a fantastic time. We won the game, we crushed our ass. Yeah, no, no, 49ers, right? Yeah, it was, a, it was a great time, and yeah, that was like the first time we really just hung out and like yeah. just bonded from there, and, you know, like I've seen you in probably 10 cities since then. Yeah, all over the, all over the all world, All over the right? world, it's crazy. So let, let's talk about, before that, right, I mean, you, you were... You, you're, 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 I mean, you're young compared to, you're like your early 30s, right? You've been actually doing this internet marketing, internet sales stuff for half your life, right? And you started as, was it a teenager? Yeah, yeah. Um, just online. I started selling on eBay when I was 14. Um, affiliate marketing started at 16. And um, yeah, so I've really just been selling things on the internet and, you know, making landing pages and all that for over half my life now well, it's kind of crazy to say. What, what spurred you to do like what where as a teenager like what oh, makes you man. say hey i'm gonna fucking you know start selling shoes online or get an internet market so most seniors aren't thinking about that shit like so what made you do that i mean everyone in my family is a hustler in a way uh, and just like i don't know my, my grandpa my grandparents and trickles down um but yeah i, I would say for me just getting in those selling shoes online. Honestly, I remember I went to New York. I've told the story, but I went to New York, went to Canal Street, and just saw like all of the, the stuff there, the, the fake items, all that. I was like, wow, this is insane. And then I started like, honestly, it started with me like, how how are they getting this stuff? Let me go online and figure out how I can get this. And then I like at the same time, honestly, was uh, I had a book and I was like how to how to make eBay listings wow. and it was just like yeah I took those two components and just made listings and um, when I was like 14 years old I literally off a of website EC21 I guess it's equivalent to Alibaba now and I would just order bulk shoes from China have them shipped to my house sell them on eBay and would have them boxed up and like my mom and I, I partnered with my neighbor back then or his dad would drive us to the post office to ship them out wow. I wasn't even old enough to drive and uh yeah that's like the origin story like I, I think once i got a taste of that i was like wait you can make money over a computer and it's like it didn't matter i was like i don't know some 14 year old black kid <laughs> you know i could like i could be michael walker serious businessman it didn't matter i was like this internet shit is amazing like that's what i want to do so let's talk about something interesting because I, I think that what I found when we first started talking, right, we were we, we at the Eagles game. I don't know. Some of this came up. You, you mentioned your grandparents. And you, you, you saw a business that ran, ran as a young kid, right? That had a big impact on you. And, you know, for me, my, what got me really into, like, making money, my aunt bought me shares of Merck stock. Seven shares, like, worth nothing. But I remember when I was eight, in eighth grade, shit, well, at one point, I made seven bucks. Ten more. I mean, like, that got me like, wow, how the fuck do I make more, man? So what was, what did you learn from watching? Watching your grandparents or the family business, like, I'm sure that like, that really was that where you got that initial thirst, or what do you think it was? I, I would say so. I mean, yeah. I, I think I just like I, I feel like I don't even um, give the significance it should, honestly, because it was just like I was born into it, right? It's just like in my blood in a way, because that's all I ever saw. But like, yeah, my grandparents are hustlers. They had their own businesses, um, you know, running daycares, assisted living homes, and at one point, like I like. When I was like 15, I had to go up in the summer every single day and work with my grand my grandparents and just see how they're doing things and all of that and like yeah, just like how to manage people, how to treat something like it's yours. You know, when something's your business, it's like it starts and ends with you. <laughs> you know, like if it's not your business, eh, that problem, whatever, someone will figure it out. But it's like if it's yours, like the problem is going to keep being there unless you, you figure it out or someone else in your organization figures out. Um, and then, yeah, like I honestly saw like you can do good and help other people come up and prosper and all that and, and still make money. So, yeah, I would say like all my business acumen and all of that definitely came from them and hard work, too. So, yeah, yeah I, I, know I find it fascinating because a lot of us was I didn't get into this industry till I was like your age, man. Yeah, and it's crazy. Yeah. I wish I got into this like when you did, because I'd be so fucking for it, right? <laughs> yeah. but, so anyone listening right now, if you're 
I mean, even my daughter, my daughter is 12 years old and she's got like um, a good amount of, uh, she's got some social media stuff going on and she's actually got a good, good follow. She's doing some sort of soccer. And at first I thought it was like a waste of time, but like now, now I'm encouraging her to do it. Right. And, and I think that that was hard for me. Yeah. You know, so I feel like anytime you can start young, like I would definitely encourage her to do it and um, just start young. Right. You're going to have a huge advantage of whatever their passion is. Like just guide them to that. Um, maybe it's not making ads. Maybe it's whatever, creating videos or, or, or soccer or whatever it might be you know like if it's singing i would just say just start young and, and just go for it is, is like to me it, it makes a big difference because uh I, I i was saying in another interview i feel like that's one of my big advantages just the experience you know like i don't know if i'm the smartest the hardest working all that but i've seen a lot so that helps you to navigate and you know yeah. different situations and i think that what you say you've seen that experience seeing what your grandparents did, and you you starting as a teenager in this business so you start you were selling shoes right and let's talk about the progression what what happened after that yeah I would say another story honestly I, I started like just really researching and googling affiliate marketing so I basically would see people um, so all right, I started with shoes and then I started I, I learned web design as well very young um, that's another story my mom when I was 14 signed me up some web design class and like Did you uh, want to do it at the time or you thought no like a, I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was hard and honestly it's funny because like it was in like in Philly it was like the Mount Airy Community Learning Center I, I get there the Bro, first you just made me think of Mount Airy Lodge <laughs> you know that Mount Airy okay that was an yeah, old Mount school Mount place yeah. the, people would take their like the girlfriends there they'd bang over there and shit man <laughs> it was like in the Poconos man a yeah. little different but like <laughs> uh, sorry thank you <laughs> <laughs> but no so like it was literally I went to a class it was like some nighttime class and it was like I think I was the only person like under the age of 50 in there I get there really? my mom I'm like what is this like it's all old people in this class and then I started like listening what the guy was teaching and all that I'm like oh this is pretty cool it was like it was like the guy who made like the first like WWF WWE website he made the first Nickelodeon wow. website um, and just yeah learn web design from there and I started making I just put AdSense right Google AdSense back in the day just putting that on these pages I would just make and try to SEO and then from there people were like no like I just read forums I was like you could make more money from affiliate marketing than, than AdSense I'm like what is that? Let me research that. And honestly, it's funny. Um, one of the sponsors of the show, shout out to Ringba. Yeah, I, I, Ringba. I, I, I linked up with um, Harrison's company back in the day. And th they were a network and just started, um, yeah. They, they paid everyone weekly. So, like, you know, for me to say at that time, I'm maybe like 16 years old, something like that. It's being able to, like, spend some money on ads or whatever and then get paid weekly was like a game changer so that was really like how I got to the affiliate side and then from there I mean I, I wasn't making crazy money or anything like that but when you're a kid you know it's like hey, I have enough money to do what I want right like buy some clothes blah 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 but it wasn't like and go know. wherever you wanted right? yeah like freedom, a little freedom yeah exactly yeah. I mean like look if I want to like order a, a cheesesteak or some pizza right now I can like yeah. type money versus the normal 16 year old but it wasn't like hey I'm balling out I'm buying jewelry I'm going away or whatever like that um, and then like yeah I just kept with it because I always saw the potential and I'm like and then like in college uh, my senior year honestly it really hit big and I just dropped out and <laughs> just went all in from there so let's talk about what and, I, and how, how did your parents take that when you said <laughs> like, like, and I couldn't have been like a, a great conversation yeah no not at I would say it wasn't, but my mom also, like... She got it a little bit? She got it, and she has that in her, too. Like, the entrepreneurial spirit, and, like, I, I don't know. Like, I just told my mom, like, look, there's some money, you know, making now. It's like... It's a lot. You sort of like the numbers. You sort <laughs> yeah. your accounts and what you're I, I, doing. I told her. I was yeah. like, look, it, it's a lot. And like, even if it. Were you proud though doing that? Like, you <laughs> have to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but like, I don't know. You know, my mom, like, still kind of nervous. Um, I, you don't know what she's going to say. But yeah. like, but like, yeah, I was like, hey, this is the situation, blah, blah, blah. And like, I, I, I think the thing that I explained was like, look, if it doesn't work, I can always go back. The credits yeah. don't expire awesome. for 10 years, something like that. And um, yeah, it just took off and just, just kept going with it. It, honestly. Do you guys ever talk about that moment, like you know where you're at now? Like, hey, remember, remember that time? <laughs> no, but like actually, I'm like that. You say that I should. You should. I should yeah, go yeah. back to and say that. Yeah, like because I was. Yeah, I was like. Yeah. Listen. Um. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm a big believer in that. I, my, I had my father pass away a couple of weeks ago, man. And, yeah. and I'm like, I took my mom to Columbia. We're in Columbia right now. We had a great time. She's seven years old, man. I'm trying to get her moved down to Florida with me. And, you know, we, we have a good lifestyle, right? We, we get to go places. I'm going to start bringing her to the fucking conference with me, man. Yeah, I know more, more, awesome. more does yeah. that with his parents. That's so awesome. I'm saying, you know, I recommend that, like, you know, you wouldn't be where you're without her, right? Right. And it's like, I like talking about these moments because this is like, this is a shit that you don't think about it when you're doing it. No, you know, for like, sure. You know, these are the little moments that get you to that, that, that point, man. Yeah, no, 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 no. He's like, other moments I was messing with, I'm like, hey, you remember when this happened? Yeah. He's like, you don't think about it. And like, honestly, like even like my upbringing, like entrepreneurial and all that stuff I said before, like, I, I think I really like took it for granted and thought it was normalized when I was younger. And as I got older, I'm like, wait, like, I don't think other people grew up like, oh, like sure, this at yeah. all. And I mean, yeah, I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate my family, you know, like they just have given me and never asked for anything. So uh, yeah. I love it, man. That, that's, that's great to, to yeah. hear. So you grew up in Philly, right? I said, I grew up in Northern Jersey. There's kind of similar culture there, right? And, and, and we talk about Eagles, very passionate fucking fans, very passionate people, man. How, how do you feel that that affected you in terms of business acumen, man. I, I, cause I feel like it gives you a level of street smarts. Right? When you're in business, you gotta know how to read people, who's bullshitting, whatever, and I well, feel like, you know, let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think everyone in, in Philly, like, arrogantly, like, I don't know, thinks like, yeah, if you're from Philly, you have the ultimate street smart. Like, you have a master's, you have a PhD in the, the street smarts. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, so like, yeah, in business, even coming down here to Columbia, you guys, hey, this is, I'm like, Okay, thanks for that, but you know, like, I, I'm gonna assess the situation. Um, but like, yeah, just in business, I mean, it's invaluable because, um, I don't know, I, I feel like it gives you like a level of intuition, like who to work with, who not to, what's good, bad characters, when you've seen and bad characters and things like that, you can better identify them in business. Like, all right, this guy's some traits that don't look too good, let me not work with him. And um, I don't know, like it just shows you how to move. Like, I, I don't know specific situations, but um, yeah, like it just, it just shows you how to move differently. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it does. So it has, has that intuition ever helped you from like a bad deal or some like save you money from like getting from getting fucked by somebody you, you're, or maybe just it's just you just I, had like a bullshit detector and you prevented yourself part of it but I, I would think also just experience like those two things combined being in the space for a while um yeah like hey this person is they're weak late you know um it's like okay they're a week late on their payments something like that and it's like assessing that like who are they blah 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 should we cut traffic immediately or like nah they're good for it like i feel like yeah that aspect is a lot and that there's certain people in the space of like hey you know i'm i don't have the money this week but i'll have it next week just work with me here and i like i feel like you know i don't know just feel or look at them and see like this person's legitimate, they mean it, yeah. blah, 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 I'm getting that, versus other people, it's like, you didn't get the money, they probably didn't communicate with you, um, it's like, all right, let me get on their ass right now. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. So, yeah. So, so cool, I mean, this is, I, I think that, you make me think of the book, I don't know if you heard, Malcolm Gladwell, he's got a book called uh, Outliers, and he talks about, to be really successful at something you need, I think it's 10,000 hours of practice at it. So I think the fact that you started when you were in your, in your early teens, that gives you such a leg up, right? And it's yeah, incredible. And that's all I, I did, because like, honestly, I, I enjoy it. Like, I don't think it was like work and all that. So it's like, I'd say very easy to get 10,000 hours. It's like, all right, the eight hours are gonna work, and then like yeah. a couple more hours, because like, just off of I enjoy it, and um, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Like the 10,000 hours, you can kind of master something, but like with this space, like maybe you can master at a high level, affiliate marketing, whatever, but like there's always more, which I enjoy. Like I don't have 10,000 10, hours on Google, you know, I don't have okay, 10,000 yeah. hours on, I don't know, some specific vertical and all that. And like there's, that's what I enjoy about this space. There's always a next level more to learn and probably getting to something else. There's always people don't get bigger and better. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, and there's always these different platforms that come out, right? That you, you gotta test, right? And, yeah, yeah. yeah so. Ringba, you can ten thousand hours in there alone, right? 100%, yeah. <laughs> to really get it down. I mean, not to say it's a very 
easy to use platform and all that, but like, yeah, I think you can, there's a level of there's mastery. There's tweaks, so intricacies and yeah, tweaks that can exactly. help you really maximize a campaign and so forth, right? Exactly. Um, there's the, the base level out of it, and then there's like, yeah, if you really know, and like me and John, like, I don't know, we, we, I always say like, as far as tech, guys who understand affiliate like i always say we have an advantage because um yeah we really know like those nuances evolve ring but and other systems and like i guess i didn't really talk about this as much but when i went to college like my my, my degree and back when i was going for is um ist information science and technology which is kind of like a more broader computer science you know so like a bit tech background too and just applying that to affiliate marketing is always an advantage yeah you know what you make me think if there was a prototypical or yeah prototypical like model of a uh, affiliate marketer, so on. You 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 have you hit a lot of the, the aspects. So you had the you had the business experience. You grew up in every little three street smarts. You got that IT kind of knowledge, that creativeness. And I think the other thing, you're an adventurer too. Right. And the fact that we fucking were in Bangkok, that was a long flight. Right. Now we're in Medellin, right? We've right. been in Miami, we've been all over. Because when you're an adventurer, you're willing to split test different right. fucking things. Right. right. You're not scared to split test. You're like, hey, if I'm wrong, whatever the fuck, right? So and, yeah, what do you think about that? And honestly, I think that part is a bigger part to the success of it all than like nowadays specifically than knowing tech or I don't know having an entrepreneurial background family I think that part matters a bit that the, the you know being an entrepreneur but it's like yeah an adventurer willing to try new things the unknown all of that I think is just um, so important because I always look at guys in this day and age like None of these guys who really blow it up, no tech, honestly, um, and they can still put up ridiculous numbers, you know, and, it, and it's like, that's just so interesting to me. And it's like, you don't have to have a technical background, all of that. Like, I know guys who, like, shout to Carter, Spooky Carter, yeah. couldn't even place a pixel, but could run 200K in a day. Yeah. Like, you know, like, shit like that. Like, it's like, that, that, was, that was mind blowing to me. And like, that's what I love about the space too. You meet someone like that and it's like, holy shit, the way I thought about the space and what you did succeed, succeed is now shifted. And um, you literally can make money just from being an adventurer and willing to try stuff and just making, being creative. And I think birds, is that the saying that birds of a feather flock together is a big thing, right? Yeah. I mean, we talk about Spooky. That guy's an adventurer too. I've been, I was just in Dominican Republic with him a month ago. Great event. Shout out to Spooky Carter. <laughs> you know, but also we're here in Colombia right now. We're here with Sal and Samar, right? We got, we got Drew Platt here. We got Ron Hart here, man. We got, we got some fucking killers here, man. I mean, so the point is like all these guys are adventurers too. We've all been around the world together. And, and and you know we're more likely to listen we're gonna fuck some things up we're gonna fail at some shit but we'll learn from that and then we're gonna hit the next thing that fucking works right right yeah no like exactly and like and then what you said too it's like also like i always appreciate like who you can meet in this space and it's like you, you can meet some genuine friends who like it's tough, right? Like we're all from and all that. Like, yeah, we have our homies from when we grew up with, but like, they probably don't have the mindset you have. And like, I want yeah. to go above and all that. It gets tough, but like, here I feel like I. It's like, all right, these people are cool, but we have the same mindset. We want to just fucking keep achieving. Um, this is another like, just amazing part about this space. Like, came here with like, hey, let not even no no business stuff. Like, you guys are cool. And we have similar mindsets. I'm sure we'll like make money out of it anyway, just from talking and being amongst each other. But um, yeah, I, I, I just love that part about the space and the camaraderie. And like, honestly, I think like you know that's another thing that just goes back to like um, like 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 Carter Ray, who you had on here, and all that. Just like I thought that was amazing. Like I've been in the space a long time, obviously, but like up until like three, four years ago, I never really talked to anyone in the space. Like I just like, you yeah, know? I we did, I found out about like two years ago, man. People were talking about Michael Walker, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Michael Walker, that's crazy, yeah. <laughs> Because like, honestly, back then, I always said the mentality is like, you don't tell anyone shit, because like, that's not your competition, because you've told yeah. them shit. Yeah. And then like, new learnings, people shifted my whole mindset up. I was like, wait a minute, Facebook is way more traffic than I ever thought, or whatever, Google is way more traffic than I ever thought. There's no harm. It's actually more valuable to share with people on your level, because um, if they really appreciate and are good people, they'll, they'll reciprocate, and like, Absolutely. not everyone's gonna reciprocate it. Like, 
but even if one in ten of those people reciprocate it, like that could change your life. Absolutely, yeah, yeah it so. goes a long way. And then guess what? You get invited into those circles, right? I mean, we're here with a bunch of fucking people doing great things. Yeah, and it's because obviously we've added value, and and that's what happens. You get invited, and then we we share ideas. You and know? it just grows, and it goes yeah. back to what I said in the beginning, right? Like, you just can't. You, you got to maintain the relationship. You can't be a scummy person. You can't burn people. Yeah. Like if you were to burn people, no, you probably you can't show up here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, exactly. or maybe, but as long as you pay people when you leave, I'm like, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but like, yeah. So like, that, I, I'd say that's very important. Just do good business and be honest. Like, hey, if you don't have it, some buyer fucked you over, whatever. I always appreciate people say like my man, I don't have your money because some buyer didn't pay me um, versus like, I didn't hear from you. Then I started thinking the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm yeah. getting on Google. <laughs> this yeah, person is. Crazy shit. This yeah. Shit. yeah, I started thinking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and it fucks up your creativity. You can't yeah. think about, no, you can't, yeah. it's not good, right? Yeah. And, and that's really, I, I think, I think what people, what, in our industry, we're like artists, right? We, me, I, I, I get a lot of my production done in my downtime. If sometimes I'm on plane, no one can call me and I'm like, Psh, I'm getting great fucking ideas, right? So when that happens, it's like it's not worth it right so it's better to just right. fucking cut that thing and just keep moving man you know? yeah yeah and, this, and the space is all ideas too that's, a, yeah. that's another thing you ready for another shot my man let's do it i, I got i got a I'm feeling you're ready bro a little <laughs> water as well but yeah, <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, good shit. Listen, how, how you like in Medellin so far? I know you just landed <laughs> yesterday, man. What, what's your first impression of this? Is the, this is the I'm not going to tell you my first place. impression, but I'll tell you my second. All right, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> God, we got to ask you. <laughs> I'll tell yeah, you yeah. my second. It's an amazing city. Um, honestly, it's a beautiful place. Like, I feel like the perception, like, everyone, I mean, you know, like, the perceptions come from America. Every American thinks... I don't know, it's gonna be dangerous, something like that, but I just think there's good, genuine, amazing people. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's interesting, just learn different cultures, be different places, because, like, you know, like, yeah, if you've only been in the US, you, you just think that's how the world is, right? But, like, what, we only make up 120th. Nah, maybe not, but whatever. Like one fifteenth yeah, of it. Idea, yeah. So it's like there's so much more to see, and I, I just appreciate that aspect. I was saying to like to John earlier, it's like we're both saying like this is the place we've been probably was like the least English speaking, and like. I don't know. I actually enjoy it. It makes you level up. I'm like, now here, like, I'm learning Spanish. I want yeah, to learn Spanish. Awesome. No, and it <laughs> opens another dimension to your brain, right? Cheers, my man. Cheers, my man. Speaking of which, Ron's here with us. He was shooting, he was shooting content yesterday, right? UGC, man. Yeah. I can't wait to see that shit, yeah. man. And I, and I think you, when you travel, right, you get new fucking ideas. Every time, I, I was just in Dubai, man. Bro, anyone, if you haven't been to Affiliate World Dubai, you gotta go. The buildings are insane. I don't even know how they are they do this architecture. There's fucking Ferraris, Lamborghinis everywhere. And it makes you think like, yo, you think you're doing good. You gotta step your shit up, man, right? right? And, and that's, yeah. that's another thing I love about the space because I always love, I don't know, maybe not the best trip. I always love like people tell me like, they're doing better than me. Yeah, you know, like that. a little, like I guess the arrogance of it all. Like I don't know. I think you got to be a little. Well, maybe you don't. But like arrogant and like I always want to be the best, right? So I hear someone's like, "Oh yeah, we're crushing it right now. We're doing 200, 300, whatever." I'm like, "I'm happy for you, but yeah, like, yeah, you're not there yet. Like, fuck, I, I, I want that too. Like now, like you've motivated me to do some shit, yeah. and like, because I'm not the best now. Like you know now. So well, that's, that's another thing about you. You're very humble, man. You you know, and you're, you're super <laughs> humble, and, I, and, and yeah. let's 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 not be so humble right now. Let, let's talk about some numbers, man. Okay. If you're comfortable with because you're. I mean, it, I I was I heard the John Castle podcast, which is amazing, right? The interview you did with you, is is that right? Two million insurance leads, calls, yeah. I mean, I mean two insurance calls, yeah. Probably more than that, like over the course of, I mean, two my, two fucking my, million. Like, That's four, a big fucking number. My four different Ringba instances in history, like yeah, probably. Um, um, yeah, just, just, I would say like med, ACA, um, those have really just been the ones that like hit on the call side. And, um, I, I feel like it was just a lot of things coming together. Like I've known Harrison and Adam for a long time. Um, I was running med leads, like pretty successfully doing like good numbers, like five figures, mid five figures a day. And then I remember one time going to InsureTech and honestly, I met it with 
uh, Somerville, Bill Somerville. Um, and great he was, guy, by the way. Yeah, Shout great out Bill guy. Somerville. And he was just telling me, honestly, Bill was getting started in it too. Like, wasn't really. Yeah. What real, year was this about? 2019, you say, or 2019 or 2020? Okay. 2020. Um, and he just met me. Like, we sure, we went to the breakfast at Lavo there, and he's just like, dude, here's how to, um, you know, here's what's going on with the call space, Medicare, blah, blah, blah. And then after that, I talked to Adam. I mean, Adam always has a lot of fucking good advice honestly he's yeah amazing uh, yeah, yeah so like uh, we can talk about it after this but like his masterminds i've gone to i feel like have given me more value than like probably like honestly like any other masterminds so think things i actually implemented in the business but um but yeah no what was i saying before that like so like we're but, talking about how you started to scale you went to you went to insure tech oh right right right, right 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 so like it's yeah. happened to Ray too, by the way. It's, it's, it's this stuff right here. It's starting to hit yeah. you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so exactly. So like, and then it was like, wait a minute. And honestly, it gave me an epiphany. That what it was. I realized like, wait, we can track calls in the same way that we track leads. There's no difference with this whole like ring tree stuff that they have and all that. And um, it just blew up that open enrollment. Like, you know, like I was. Was well, that your like your LFG moment? Let's fucking go. Let's moment, fucking like go. Yeah, and like that, it, it just crushed. Like it, 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 it crushed. Like, I think Bill came up off of that too. Um, I was making a different, you know, just a different level. You're, ta- you're another tax bracket then, like the probably yeah. Yeah, well, same tax bracket, but uh, like higher effective rate, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but bro, that's what I like about this industry is that we rise up together, right? It's, and it's great. You want someone like Bill who tells you some information. We want, we want, we want to all go up exactly, together, man. Because there's always gonna be another campaign, right? And we're gonna come together in that fucking campaign, and we're gonna grow and yeah. crush that shit. And it's like, and the, 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 with Bill too, it's like he showed me that side. Side, I just told him like, hey, here's the media buying. Here's all these guys, the Carters of the world. And like, honestly, like these days, we don't do that much anymore, like we did then. But like, it's always all love like yeah. you know from from that no, you together history, remember that and shit, like yeah. if it was ever like you know whatever we you got him got you, yeah, yeah. exactly so um just doing good good business and uh yeah bro that was a lot I, I gotta do another shot because that that fucking you got me that's one of the things that people don't talk about is like those that that was a breakfast at lava right that kind of was an epiphany moment for you. And you go in this breakfast out, let me see what's going on. But that's that adventure mindset. Like, right. let me go check this shit out. Dude, I met, I met, I didn't even tell you, I, I met Somerville on, on Facebook. Same way I met Carter, actually. I, I, I literally see him posting. Honestly, you know what it is? My man Ron over there. I used to be like, Ron. I, I told him, I was like, you, you should have shut up. But like, he was posting his stats, all of that. I was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, what the fuck? I don't tell you. Like, I used to, I used to be like, what, what's going on over there? Like, yeah, yeah. And then I talked to Somerville, and he's like, oh, it's this paper call, like, blah, 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 stuff. And then, like, um, and then, yeah. So, like, and then talked to, like, Adam, and Adam taught me, like, how to track it and all of that. And I was like, I, I think... It yeah. all came together, it, right? It, it all came together. came together, and then it goes like, boom. And, and exactly. And it's an example of, like, you just got to, like, meet people, be an adventure, and, like, just don't be a shitty human. I don't know. <laughs> bro. So, bro, there's a guy named Bradley. He's got a show called Drop and Bomb. That was a fucking bomb. He was like, dude, he press a button and, like, you know, be a good human being. Don't be shitty. Meet people. Be an adventure. That, it, it, we complicate shit, man, in business sometimes. I've done that, too. Listen, I'm not perfect. I've been doing this a while. There's times where I complicate shit and add shit. But when you keep it simple, man, it all comes back to that, man. No, I, I agree. I always say, like, I, I'm always willing to give people as long as like a take away from my core business or make them competition to take away from my you know daily dollars because like one like i see myself like i would have wished someone would have told yeah me something but like you know not completely altruistic i'm like i there, it's an investment right if i put 10 things out there one of them's gonna come exactly. back and make me more money than i've given out on these 10 things or or yeah maybe yeah exactly and then like um yeah, that, that, that's yeah. what it comes down to. <laughs> I, I love it, man. So let's let's talk about that the that that moment, that LFG moment. You started fucking moving. Like, where, where did you go? You went. We were doing a few thousand calls a day. What, when did that? What did that go to? Ten thousand calls a day. Fifty thousand. Like, how many calls were you doing at that point? 
at that point, see, it's a little different on volume of calls. Like my peak revenue and peak volume of calls are two different things. Okay. Um, I, I don't remember the call numbers, but like we scaled that open enrollment. Like my first open enrollment with Medicare calls, like. 350k days stuff like that uh -huh. like just like before everyone was like oh medicare medicare and that's why because people see the success of it and like honestly i feel like that made it grow a lot because like i know a lot of these publishers and they weren't running calls and they say like wait what's this guy doing over here and even like trying to talk like different networks and stuff like hey we need you might have some medicare buyers that you sell leads to ask them if they need calls yeah and then like honestly some of those relationships like um did work and like they like went to their lead buyers and just got calls but like also at the same time um you know it just grew i think it blew blew it up a little right we're like what's going over there oh calls like all right now every yeah. network and their mother is like calls 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 for sure because um, yeah. they hear the numbers and all that and it's like all right if i start doing it, and then someone else starts doing it, and then someone else starts doing it and then like you know, these AMs who had people running leads before, like, hey, why aren't you running traffic anymore? They're all like, oh, I'm running calls and all this money. Then yeah. they're going to get into calls. And then exactly. it's just fucking, yeah, blown up from there. So, so it sounds it sounds great and glamorous, right, to hit these numbers, <laughs> 350K days, right? But there's not, nothing is as easy as it seems, obviously, right? So <laughs> and I could imagine cash flow, right? I mean, you're doing fucking 350K. And I'm not saying every day is like, but let's say you did, let's say a couple hundred K a day. You're talking about, what, it's 30? days that's six million a month right yeah i mean for somebody that went for suing shoes on ebay right and like to get to that level like what were some of the growing pains on that and scaling to that level yeah like like you said like cash flow and honestly like never like it, you know took like money from everyone investments like that just literally bootstrapped i remember when i first got back in the legion i was fucking flipping that shit on a debit card like you know like, wow. like, like, not like, even a credit card like, damn that's another story but like yeah um but like it, it's just like convince people give me twice a week payments fuck it pay me daily and it's like showing your value because like they're they need you at that point yeah. so like they don't want the traffic drive it's like hey if you want this level of volume to keep going i need this amount of money and if it was like i need this this fast if it's sitting in their bank account anyway it's like what the hell's the difference? You just said something like really big that I think people lose in our industry lose lose sight of. And I've done this too, is knowing your value, right? And and sometimes we think a, a lead vendor, we're, we're like lead vendors. No, yeah. you're a fucking partner in their business. Without yeah, them, exactly. you, they're not gonna, without us, they can't hit their fucking numbers. Right? Honestly, I feel like in this space in general, like especially networks, I feel like a lot of times will undervalue yeah. the publisher partnerships. Like, cause they'll see like the big names, right? They'll say, oh, my advertiser is Quicken Loans. Their Loan Depot will do whatever not to burn that relationship. But at the same time, they don't have the mentality about like standard conversions or whoever, spooky marketing. Um, and those, com those companies will make you more business, more money exactly. than the Quicken Loans. And I, I just think like, yeah, like the, the mentality we have with Rubicon, like we have couple like external guys it's like just treat them with the, the value and like honestly to me I think publishers are as important it depends on like what the season the offer and all that is the publishers are as important or more important than the advertisers because like um, I agree like you have a solid network of publishers like once you have something that's good and gonna hit like you can always tap into that like you know say f for me now like I don't know. I got a lot of homies that run a lot of ads. If I ever had something that was huge, you know, like I'm like, yo, we need 10 million a day on this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you could probably get it, man. Honestly, if, if it was that good, good probably. Yeah. probably. It, it comes down to having a good product, right? And I think that that that's a big point. If you're, I've, I've been in a situation as well. I didn't get like next day payments or like, but I I would, I would go from guys who are like net 30, net 45 to fucking weekly, right? Yeah. And that makes a big difference. Yeah. So that's that's what I would imagine be the biggest issue. If you put in those kind of numbers, like the cash flow how the fuck do i keep this going and they need you like at the end of the day, if you cut that off they're gonna fucking pay next day they'll right. do what they'll move mountains to make that shit happen right because right? they're making their money right like at the end of the day like they see whatever their margin is they're making 15 percent like they want to keep making that you know even if they gotta put a little more money out today they know it should come back yeah. if they trust their partners on the back end and all that so yeah i love it man yeah and Let's, yeah can I take a piss real quick? Oh, go <laughs> take a piss, great. I'll get a shot Sorry. ready for us. Uh, where the fuck did we leave off? I don't even remember. What were we talking about? Anyway, anyway, so listen, let's let's say, let's say, um, 
let's say I'm someone brand new, trying to break, I'm, I'm watching the LFG show, I'm watching the Ring Bar, Off the Wall, the, the, the affiliate marketing show, right? And like, I see these guys put on numbers. I'm seeing, I'm watching Ron Hart, man, putting up his numbers, man. Like, what's, what's the word of advice, one word of advice someone new trying to get in the industry? What would you say to them? Yeah, like, I think it's a lot different now than like say when I started, but I would say the number one thing is just to network and talk to people. Like you can make so much money in this space just from knowing people. Like literally like there's people in the space who are just good at knowing people, managing people, managing relationships. And then also, um, you know, like the, the business side of it, there's just no like inherent like, oh my God, I'm a great marketer, I'm a great tech guy. They're just no, they know business and know how to network. Um, you know, like there's so much money. Like me and Ray were just talking about this. It's just like, yeah, like literally at every show, the goal is just to just to talk to people. Um, so I, I would say, like, if I was brand new in this day and age, getting started. I would say like I would try to take some basic level of course or learning. I honestly I'm big on YouTube with anything. Mm -hmm. I know there's tons of YouTube content out there for free. Like I know John Casto puts out stuff and even like just the interviews and stuff. You're not getting direct learning, but you're gonna get the mindset of everyone there. And I'm like, wow, all those guys are saying this, they're doing this. There's similarities here. Let me at least do that part. You know, so I would say like network, go to a show, affiliate summit, affiliate world lead gen and then maybe like the courses like Carlos Corona's um, and then there's like some guys with teach like higher level ones like like Gabe Ansel um, he's in one in Miami yeah yeah stuff like that and um, I know a lot of guys honestly who just learn from his program or just crushers now but like if you want to just go about it completely for free that's the thing about this space you don't have to and I think that's a misconception and like the people have with like online ads and all this like well I got to drop all this money for some course to ever learn how to do it and it's like no like if you're really willing to grind and sift through information that'll give you a shortcut because they sifted through the information exactly, yeah. for you but like if you really like want this shit more than you want to fucking breathe like you can go on youtube i used to read every post in all the facebook groups all the the facebook ad bar groups every you know uh back in the day like digital point black hat world warrior forum all that i used to just read wow. all of it and you get one little tidbit um that can change anything and then everything and then um yeah just consuming the content nowadays it's shifted but it's like i feel like you just got to get in that right circle of of media buyers and it's just saying hi like i've met guys who are like it doesn't even matter if they've done crazy numbers on anything. It's like, you know what? You're a cool person, whatever. Hit me up. I'll link with you. And then if you need something, I can link you up to someone else. All yeah. of that. They're willing so. to give, man. They're yeah, not, exactly. They're not, they're not like, and, and I'm going to keep all this shit for myself. And I appreciate yeah. just people like just going for it. Like, hey, I'm so fucking nervous. This is my first show I've ever been to. Blah, yeah. blah. It's like, honestly, like, I, I, I appreciate you doing that and like I probably would at that point have had the balls to do that shit Lord, so yeah. yeah so like I don't know I always think stuff like that's dope and then I, I always think it's dope seeing them in a couple of years like I saw where you were remember when I first no, met you amazing. when you first fucking started now look at you bro I'm getting that feedback right now from people like especially with the LFG show I'm, I was in Dubai people are taking pictures I'm like what the fuck they're watching this show I'm like, <laughs> you're famous bro yeah and I got people for like from 20 years ago like Dave I'm so proud of you I'm like shit I forgot about those moments but it's like <laughs> Yeah, that's part of the progression. It's beautiful. Like I'm like, wow, you're right. Like I forgot I was at that stage. Now, I'm, and it's, it's and, and I know, bro. I'm, I'm still learning. I'm learning from guys like you. I'm learning from guys that are here, right here in this room. We're always learning. We gotta always have that mindset, and that's how you continue to grow. Dude, Once you I, stop learning, you're fucking dead, man. And that's the thing about this. You can always learn, and like I don't know. Yeah, it would be it would be arrogant to say anything else. Like you can always learn. There's always someone who does something way better than you do. Like always. Like, like Ron doing data monitors all that stuff I'm like what, what's going on like you know like I've been this a long time like stuff like that still like Shit. advanced and oppressive like guys who do the UGC and they're like my bad yeah and they're just like longer. this is how you do the hook and the format and all that and I'm like I haven't even thought of that ever yeah. but you just dropped knowledge on me that like took you probably 
some money and some time to figure out. And it goes back to what I was saying, just like sharing knowledge. Maybe I taught them how to set up a pixel in, in you know, the tracking platform and um, was it Red Track or something? And to yeah. me, that's like nothing. But to, and then they you showed me how to make, they, they showed yeah. me how to make videos and stuff. And to them, that's nothing. But yeah. to each of us, no, you collapse time, time. 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 And that's it, huge, exactly. man. That, that helps move the fucking needle. Yeah, you cheers, got me thinking man. of cheers, my man. <laughs> this is fucking great. So, I mean, I wanted to ask a follow-up question, but I'm, you, you diverted me a little bit. I went to the Super Bowl, so the Eagles play. We fucking lost. <laughs> Terrible fucking tough loss. Yeah. You, that weekend, you were at a mastermind. I yeah. don't, was that Spooky or Gabe's? That was Gabe's event. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that shows a level of, level of dedication. The Eagles were playing that day, yeah. and you were at a, at a mastermind. But, bro, that's actually the best move to make because your you're, you're team was playing. But how much... Think about that. that shows your level of fucking dedication to your craft, man. I mean, yeah, and like t to me, like I, <laughs> I, I have serious FOMO. I don't want to miss any info, right? Like, yeah, so that's what like, it comes down somebody to. Some new vertical, something hitting. I'm like, fuck. I'll just been in that room in veil, and like, and like that. It also goes back to what I was saying. You can learn too. And like, honestly, I spoke at that event, but like, I was also one of the people asking the most questions. Yeah. Like, wait, what's that? Because like, you're right. Well, we're a geek out. I, we're also a geek out, and, and I, was like, I forgot about that. You were asking, you asked the most questions there. Yeah, and I, I feel like a lot of people, they want to make it seem like, oh, no, I don't know, they want to be cool, right? I'm the expert, I know so much. Like, let me not ask that, but like, I don't, I don't know if it's going to further my business. I don't care. Course, like, yeah. no, none of us know everything. Like, you know, so, um, yeah, and just like the, the geek out thing, I thought that was, that guy Taylor, that's another guy. Oh, that guy blew it out the water. He, that, he was the first fucking speaker. I had to go later. I'm like, <laughs> I was you, saying that. You're like, I'm going to feel like, gee, what the fuck are we going to talk about? This guy, <laughs> we're going to be like jerk offs over here, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was one more, like, Impressive yeah. speed, and again, that's just an that example. was a billion dollar campaigns, man. Yeah, he was like, a B. he's like, this is how you run a million a day on the on the PPP loan stuff, and I was just like, and that's another, there's, there's a few examples there. It's like being an adventurer, but it's also like there's always bigger and better. And that's one of the reasons I try to like humble myself to a level, right? In your head, you gotta think you're the best, but like, I'm not gonna go out there and like, I don't know, try to shit on people because like someone would look at me and be like. <laughs> Like this guy thinks he's, you know, something like yeah. he's he's not even there yet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like it's it's an amazing space. <laughs> it is. I, I think they're gonna look back in history at this space is like, and who knows? Maybe this is the infancy of it. I don't know where we're at. What do you think? You think is this is the in, where, where are we in this? You know, <laughs> what are we? You know, um, the, the evolution. I'm affiliate marketing is dead. No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, fuck, I, I, I thought you were serious, like, bro. No, I mean it's, it's a joke because like they've been saying that since. Um, they always say that. They said that since 2011. Yeah. So, like, Literally, like, and I know guys to this day who are making like black hat money and all that. And I talked to another friend, and they were just like, "Wait, you're still doing this?" Like, I, blah blah blah. Told me this was dead. And I was like, "No," because they just they they just had a certain lane. They didn't yeah. really try to understand it at a higher level. They didn't evolve. Um, so, That's like bad, again, yeah. this space I think is always evolving. At the end of the day, it's businesses who want consumers on an acquisition basis. That's never going away. No. Period. Period. And then you throw in the call stuff and all of that too. It's just like. It makes it even easier for them to connect because certain businesses might not be set up to like ingest leads and have all this but you can dumb it down to like we will have people call your office yeah. and you just pay for qualified people like yeah. that's only going to accelerate the space yeah. i love it man so the other question I was going to ask, let, let's, let's pretend I was somebody who's been doing this. Let's say I've been doing this for many, many years. I hit a plateau. What, what, what's, what's your advice to someone like that? Maybe, maybe I was making, maybe I was doing six figures a day, you know, I, and then now I'm down to like low fives. Like, because that shit happens. I mean, campaigns right. die. They don't last forever. So what, what's your advice to someone like that? Almost the same. Just get out there and, t and, and talk to people and like, just, just be honest. Like you might have someone who like really sympathizes with your situation, with your network. Like if you were making a hundred, but whatever, and you're like, Hey, Ray, look, yeah, no, things aren't too great. We're struggling a little bit. He might be like, I got you. I'm gonna plug. I'm gonna give you some plug and play shit because you're you're the homie or whatever. Just because he's fucking feeling some type of way that day, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, like yeah. just because he's feeling good on a Tuesday. Like that just happened to me. Like where someone's like, I'm like, why are you telling me this shit? Yeah. So like, I feel like a lot of people they just 
you have too much pride, honestly. Um, you just got like in that situation, if like things died out for me, I'd be like, I just tap into my network and be like, hey, what are you doing? What offers are hot? What platforms? What issues are you seeing? And just like one on one, try to talk to them and probably like get them on a phone call. Obviously, that we're in person, but if you can't, just like, hey, I really want to pick your brain about this. You have a second for like a 15 minute call. And like, I always say, like, yeah, if you can get outside like the whole text, you know, like Skype, all that bubble, you can get a lot more information. And then like, um, I would say beyond that, just testing, right? Like you just gotta keep testing, testing, testing. And then also like, so you don't ever get to that point. While shit's hot, you gotta keep Absolutely. acting like it's not. Like just yeah. forget about that shit. Or like, not forget about it, but like, like I, I had that men mistake too and like I was, you know, tell like newer publishers, like when something's working, keep going because like you're taking this for granted. You're in your mind saying, all right, I'm making $500 a day, multiply by 365. I'm good, blah, blah, blah. But I promise you in my experience doing this, no campaign just without bumps last 365. Absolutely, yeah. So like when you're making that money, just assume it's going to get cut off fucking tomorrow. You should keep building upon that. So like, I, I would say it's more like a preemptive thing. If you've been doing it you and shit dies down, like it happens because the ships the space but like you probably got complacent at some point along the way i i, I agree that's a hundred percent i'm going through that shit with solar right now solar yeah. was fucking great for yeah fucking seven years man but it's almost like yeah you can't predict it, whether that's your core business right like you can't be like all right let me just do some shit outside of solar it's my sole core business but like i feel like like as you see that decline right you're like all right i gotta get in that grind Absolutely. mode again i gotta i'm not like who i thought i was okay. like and it's even time when to it was go back going, to old yeah. Me. And what you see, even when it was going, like I was hitting big fucking numbers. I'm like, this shit's not gonna last forever. You know, what if every fucking house got solar? Yeah. What if a new president comes in and says, fuck solar, right? Yeah. So that, I always lived by my test. So I started senior direct marketing. You yeah, know, and then exactly. we started doing fucking, we started doing uh, Medicare, we're doing ACA, we're doing debt, right? So we got that. And I always said at one point, senior directs would overtake oh, solar direct, and it fucking happened. That's awesome. right? But you got to do that, man. Because, yeah. bro, now it's like we're going through all this shit, and we're always going to make money in solar. Don't get me wrong, until no, we can't, but that is not where it was. But I, I had that same mentality. It hit me like three years ago. I'm like, I'm a fucking one trick pony here. Yeah. I don't want to be one trick pony. Yeah. I merged my company with another company and we're doing data. We're like, that's what you got to do. So what you said right there is super, super valuable. We're not someone that's done it. And trust me, it's not easy because you're like, you want it, you want to chill, but you can't chill, man. You got to keep fucking going. And then you got to develop a team. So my, my next question, you talk about your team. How the fuck, <laughs> you know, obviously if you put in those kind of numbers, like what's your team? Like how many people have a team? What's, what's the whole composition of that? Uh, yeah, on the Rubicon side, okay, was this four, five, six? It's like, like, all in all, 10 of us, less than 10. Wow. And um, I mean, it's just getting talented, motivated people. And, and, and that's it. Like, Are they more than mainly US based or what's the. So, yeah, when I say that, in the US, what are we, four, like seven, eight? Something like that, eight okay. in the US, and then I guess maybe like three outside, seven or eight in the US, and three outside. Um, and then, yeah, like for me, I, I look for like, I want a hustler before any fucking talent, anything like that. Wow. And like, I've had a media buyer ask me, like, so what, like, what, what's the skill, like, you think that make a successful media buyer? I'm like, I, I want somebody who's going to hustle and who's seen hard shit, generally, with a media buyer. <laughs> like, that. you know, like, and they have the mentality, like, one, my media buyer is now like Wesley, like, he, He'd never meet it by it in his life, and he was he was a busser at Encore Beach Club in Vegas, mm. you know. But I'm like, he's just like, nah, I don't ever want to go back to busing in 110 degree weather, yeah. right? So that the, the mentality is different. You're willing to just do what the fuck, whatever. Sometimes with making ads, like it's not even like who's creative is nice, who's willing to actually execute and do yeah. do do that shit, because um, like. That's my mentality. Like, if I gotta eat, I'll do whatever. <laughs> you know, so that's the that's the main thing. And like, all of us are hustlers, and like, that's the thing. I'm, I'm honestly, I, I, I feel blessed because like, that's not it's not my style. I don't ever have to like really overly manage people and all of that because like, one people are incentivized to do it, but everyone just has that fucking mentality of, of, of winning and doing more. Um, and then it's just like finding smart people and good people that have, I've worked with in the space before Jenner, like in most cases, like so the Wesley one, but like most of the people I work with, like like 
John, Issa, David, Ricky, blah, 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 are just people I've, I've worked with and like, wait, like, you're fucking talented. I promise you, like, we could do more together than apart. Like, not gonna hinder you, not gonna like, fuck you over in any way. So that's the, that's the team. Um, yeah, like, I would say most of our team is just, people have been in the space and have, have done it before, but then also like, hustlers like so like there's a couple people who have it um and then one thing i got from like actually like adam's mastermind i don't know if he wants me to give this away for free but like, <laughs> but, like, yeah. like no like yeah. he was just like look at your competition and like not even your competition the companies you would want to be wow. right and like I, I i saw one it was honestly like um we went through there was like quote velocity this is like these guys fucking crush on calls like man he's like really all those guys i'm like all right that's one company i was like we're not at that level like i think i do some shit but those guys do shit yeah. <laughs> you know like so like great it, guys too by the yeah, way yeah yeah I, I, I don't know him that well but like i know yeah man he's a very good guy he's always willing to share and like yeah. even not knowing him, he's always been willing to share um but like if we you know took that mentality he's like he, he basically said you should go and try to acquire talent from the companies that you want to be like which is mm -hmm. honestly like might have wow. been life-changing for me that's that, it was game-changing but might have been life-changing because like i never thought about that and it's just like and you, you never thought you could do that and like yeah i remember we went and did it john like like one of their devs there was like, all right, they have fucking good tech, all this. Like, we, we hired a dev from that company. He's been one of the best devs, period. Um, and yeah, so like, that matters a lot. I, I'd say that's a tip for anyone here. Like, just think about, write down five companies that you admire, that you want to like, like, fuck, I'm here right now, but I want to get to where that company is. And then just, get on linkedin see people who work there who whatever um who, who worked there previously because now what you're getting is like that knowledge a little bit right Bro, so that's more like an acquisition right like yeah. buy it, it out, then you get you're kind of doing the same thing you're acquiring that experience you're collapsing time frames and it's that's collapsing time huge. frames i like that it's collapsing time frames you know yeah. so like that right there that's another Dropping bombs moment. I got I got come on, I got come on LG moment. Boom. Yeah, that's what that is. Yeah, know? like somebody throw like an overlay or something over that. Like, For real, nah, we will. That, <laughs> that right there. Listen, I said, bring your fucking notepads. Yeah. Out. I hope if I was in school, it's, that shit would be like. Psh, psh, it's like, it's new, so new one. simple, but like. You know, like, 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 if you want to build out a data company and pass all that, hire someone from Fluent. Yeah. You know, if you want to, like, <laughs> like whatever. Sure, that's what people have done. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, like, um, it, it's it's valuable as fuck, and like, and like, you'd be surprised. And like, a lot of people in this space like don't like. I don't know. I think they're scared to hire those businesses. Like, oh, I'm just a media buyer. They don't want to like transition. To, and I think at that point, it's like transition to a real business, yeah. right? And like, I think a lot of people just undersell themselves. Like, because you can go out and hire those people, and they will. They're like, oh, I'm just a media buyer. No one wants to come work with me. No one wants to like fucking do a deal with me. Like, no, you can go get devs, biz, business development people, affiliate managers, whatever, media buyers, whatever. Um, yeah, you have a lot more than you think. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's crazy. I think like you said, going back to being understanding your value, right? Getting around hustlers and it's it's a lot easier said than done, obviously, and it takes time. But man, it, it, fucking amazing. It is, shit. but it, it's just doing and trying it. Yeah. Like I wouldn't say it's easier said than done until I failed at it, right? Because most people like they'll think it's easier said than done, but they just haven't tried it. Because yeah. like they might on the first try just fucking do it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Listen, I feel like. We can talk, we can sit here, drink fucking five bottles of this shit. <laughs> yeah. to like, and people do that. We can be here like five seven in the morning. I swear to God, we can, man. But yeah. we're going to probably do a, a, a part two. We'll do it in another city for somewhere, sure. right? For sure. This was fucking amazing, guys. This was an amazing, amazing episode. I hope everyone took the notes, like I said. Michael Walker, we talked about being in Columbia. We're here, and it's like, I wish everyone could see the other <laughs> side of this. We got, we're we're going to do a, a, a dinner behind the scenes dinner that'd be like you know some bonus stuff here but like this is gonna be fucking great so i'm glad that you're here man thanks for sharing yeah, this thank you you, 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 you don't have to fucking do this man the fact that you're willing to do this says a lot you know nah, so, man you know yeah. for you guys like yeah whatever it's all love <laughs> how can people find out more about you what's what's your you know ig link like what what do you um yeah i mean so rubiconperform.com 
They can, I mean, our emails, <laughs> I'll throw out someone else's email. Uh, <laughs> I'll throw Issa, sorry, Issa. Okay. Um, Issa, I-S-A, at rubiconperform.com. Yeah. Um, and if you want to add me on ins- Instagram and see my debauchery, um, it's, it's fun. It's underscore time. Walker. Uh, ITS underscore Walker. Um, and yeah, whatever. Just reach out and connect. I'm always, I don't know. I always like seeing people come up. Like, I think a lot of people would. would you really do, and that's genuine. Would, man. Would, you mean- would tell you that, like, you know, like, whatever. You didn't have to tell me you're doing crazy numbers or whatever. I'm like, nah, just, this is a good person. He's wants to make it just like I did. He wants to, you know, br- bring his family up and succeed and all that and make a living. Like, I don't know. I just, I always think that's cool. Like you, you've taken the steps and had ambition. So like sometimes you need to push it. If it yeah. costs me nothing, like, I don't know. That'd be fucked not to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. Listen, we're going to end with a shot here. This is the, this is what the American dreams about, right? You, you bust your ass, you work hard, you take risks, you fall down, get the fuck back up. And that's what Michael Walker's done. And the beautiful thing, man, he's still in his early 30s. I mean, I, mean, I wish I can, I can go back 10 years and be where he's at. So I can't wait to see what the future holds for you, man. I think you're going to keep making an impact. I think we're going to keep creating memories. And let's do a lot more of these fucking LOG moments. Let's yeah. fucking go, baby. Well, let's appreciate, appreciate it. Love let's it, man. Go. Beautiful shit. Boom. Man, that was a banger, man. That was a appreciate fucking it. Woo. <laughs> woo, woo fucking banger. Right there, oh. That was good shit, man. <laughs>